We have UCLA guard Jack Seidler, and we're going to be talking college hoops, NBA, of course, best take, worst take, and our UCLA Big Three draft. All right, Jack, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, man. I'm excited to be here. Dude, so my first question, you know, next year you guys are joining the Big Ten. How afraid of you are playing of playing Rutgers? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting question. I wouldn't say I'm afraid, but more so excited being from New Jersey. So it would be cool to, uh, you know... Get to go back home, play in front of my family and friends. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. How have you guys like talked as a team of like how different it's gonna be traveling all over the country like the entire next year? Um, uh, briefly. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely gonna be crazy. I know that they said like we might be on trips for maybe even two weeks at a time. Damn. What so. is it like normally right now? Uh, normally, so we play like either Wednesday and Saturday or Thursday and Saturday. So like we'll leave after practice the day before a game Mm -hmm. or then fly back after every Saturday game. So it's not too bad. We'll be gone like three, four days at a time. And now you're just going to be, you're never going to be in LA. I know it's going to be tough. Yeah. It's going to be tough. (laughs) So much of cold weather. I left the cold weather and I'm going straight back to it. You're like, bro, I didn't got to want to go back to New Jersey. (laughs) Exactly. Did you play any of your uh, high school playoff games at the rack? Yeah. My last ever high school game. Uh, was at the rack. Unfortunately, we lost. Damn, uh, yeah. damn. It was it was a cool experience. Damn. But I'm, yeah, I was looking into it a little bit, and you were like, you were carrying that squad <laughs> to like never before seen from your high school like levels. Uh, yeah, nah, we were we were pretty good. We had we had some guys who could play. And you guys, um, was your whole starting five like five year or like seniors yeah so our whole starting five was seniors we like grew up together played together since third grade so it was really just the chemistry was just there yeah yeah, everybody knew where everyone was gonna be that's awesome we won a lot of games yeah i'm gonna be rooting for y'all next year except when you play us (laughs) that's fair that's fair yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I also grew up a USC fan, so I'm kind of curious, like, how have you felt like the USC UCO rivalry has like kind of been? Because I felt like it was a little bit bigger when I was a kid growing up than it's kind of like evolved into. Yeah, I mean, this year, obviously, you know, both teams having you know a little bit of a down year, but um, last year was crazy. Games were crazy. Even this year, you know, it was sold out. Um, I would say probably back east, the rivalries feel like a little bit bigger and more important. But UCLA USC is as big as it gets out here, so I think it's I think it's pretty strong. Yeah, how do you think you guys are going to be next season? Um, definitely, you know, we should be back back in form. Um, hopefully, you know, get some new guys. Um, hopefully, keep a lot of our players from this year, develop them. We got a lot of young players, and it's hard to win when you're young in college, especially yeah. like now. Uh, you know, with the COVID year. People redshirt and there's a lot of old old players, 24, 25 year olds. We got a lot of 18, 19 year olds. Mm-hmm. So like last year you played with Jaime and Tiger. Like, how has it been seeing those guys like transition into the NBA? Yeah, nah, it's it's awesome. Um, you know, especially Jaime, he's freaking killing it. And just seeing a dude, you know, you hung out with on a day-to-day basis, um, just freaking going out in the NBA and killing it. When you guys saw, like, where he was projected to go in the draft last year, were you guys, like, all thinking, like, like everybody's sleeping on this guy? Or Well, yeah, a lot of people, you know, because he stayed four years in college, so people, you know, tend to go That's towards the, the basic younger. That's exactly, for sure. Yeah. But he always wanted to go to Miami. He, mm-hmm. like, really? we, we went on a trip to Miami, and he was like, I need to be here, I want to be here. So he kind of manifested it. And was that because of, like the heat culture aspect of it all or just like who doesn't want to live in Miami? both yeah 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 yeah. he definitely clearly fits him well yeah i mean hey he fit in like a so what are you gonna do when it's heat celtics in the eastern conference finals are you rooting for the heat or are you gonna root for your your celtics that's a you're putting me you're putting me under a lot of pressure here um like are you gonna be a bad fan or a bad i'll be rooting for jaime you know to do his thing 30 points but I'm probably gonna have to stay with my Celtics. <laughs> but you know, point, either doubles either, either way, you know, I can't be too mad. So yeah. how did you become a Celtics fan growing up between like the Knicks and the Sixers? Oh God, I get this question a lot. So when I grew up, I just liked all the sports teams that my dad liked, and that was that. But he wasn't a big NBA fan. So when I was little, I loved the color green. 
and my uncle got me a green Celtics jersey and I would like wear it every single day. I wouldn't take it off. We're at the school every day. We're at the basketball every day. And yeah, kind of just went from there. Who Whose jersey was that? It was Kevin Garnett. There we go. Okay, it's a pretty good one. It's a pretty yeah. good one. Also a really great time to be a Celtics fan, I would yes. say, and like fall in love with that team. Agreed. I feel like there's never been a bad time to be a Celtics fan like in our lives. <laughs> there was one year that they I remember they had a losing season. They won like 20, 30 games. It was like the year after it. they traded the big three, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's they got like the sixth pick and took Marcus Smart the next year. Yeah, and they've been good pretty much ever yeah, since. Yeah, pretty much ever since. Yeah, well, I mean, they had the whole trade package and everything. Yeah, I've been pretty lucky as a Heat fan. I feel like the Heat are just like always good. Of course, like Jaime comes in and he's just good like right away. <laughs> well, do you guys want to hear what it's like to cheer for a miserable franchise for a good decade? <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Uh, uh, it's terrible. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. But it makes it so much sweeter when your team gets over the hump. I will oh, say sure. that. So how has your like fandom progressed or, or changed since you like entered the college realm of basketball? Um, I would definitely say I'm much more educated now. Okay. Like just see the game from a different perspective. And like seeing the difference from the college game to the NBA game is pretty wild. Like, just how in the NBA, I feel like they're so much more careless with the ball. Like, mm -hmm. turnover is so much more common. Just easy baskets. In college, it's like a grind for every single basket. Why do you, why do you think that is? Um, the game's longer. And, you know, dudes in, the, dudes in college are trying to get paid. So every every possession is like a Die for is like a dog ball. fight. Yeah. But then also, you know, the NBA, the the quality of players is just better. So you know, everybody could make an open shot. Everybody. Mm -hmm. So you know, more court spacing, that type of thing. Yeah. So, like, how has it been? Like, kind of seeing like you know, like with Jaime and Tiger going. Like, are so are there some other guys you're really excited to see from your program, like heading to the NBA in the future? Yeah. Um, you know, also we had like Am Amari Bailey, who mm -hmm. was who's pretty good. He's uh over in the G League killing it. Uh Jalen Clark, who's with the Timberwolves. Uh he's been injured, but he's a great defender. Like I think I think will be a problem in the league. And then, you know, with Dem Bona, he's uh he's with us right now. But just he, he's gonna be like a prospect for this. Yeah, upcoming he's he's draft. an athletic. Athletic Give us our, our what our got our people that are our audience that hasn't seen him play at all. What's give us just like the like spark if I notes. had to give him like a player comp, probably like a like a Rob Williams. Okay, cool. Someone who could block shots, catch lobs, play defense, guard the pick and roll at an at elite level. Yeah, super and, bouncy. You know, I, I think once he sharpens up his offensive game a little bit, and you know, cuts down on his on his fouls, he's gonna be he's gonna be a really good player. Yeah. So switching gears a little bit, because I know you started doing your TikToks when you were in high school and like you've been growing your like social media you're laughing already. <laughs> I know you're growing your like social media presence. And I know like like what are you trying to do with like your social media? Like obviously with NIL, it's opened up like so much like kind of cool stuff like for you guys. Like what are you kind of trying to do with that? going Yeah. Forward? Uh, I mean, I'm really just trying to have fun with it, you know, make videos, one that I enjoy and then two that, you know, I feel as if other people will enjoy kind of giving them a perspective of like a little behind the scenes because i know growing up i always wondered like oh what is what is a day in the life look like what does this look like so really just trying to do that um obviously you know trying to grow grow the brand uh will help with the nil a little bit and yeah that's really it so did nil start like, like the year before you went to college yeah so i got in just in just yeah in time. so were you thinking about that when you signed like your letter of intent and stuff not really, to be honest, but I mean, now I am. <laughs> <laughs> what was that process like, actually? Like, how did you end up at UCLA? Yeah, so it's kind of a crazy story. I played um, I played AAU ball with um, Team Final, and I played with dudes like Jalen Duran, um, Derek Lively, a couple other giant dude. people, <laughs> a couple other dudes that are playing in college. And that opened up, you know, a lot of connections, a lot of avenues. And um, I was thinking about going to like an Ivy League level school, something like that, a small level school. I took a couple of visits and I got a call from the coach of UCLA right after we won the state championship. And I was like in shock. Like I told my parents, I was like, 
I got a voicemail and I thought it was fake at first, to be honest. And yeah, he told me, you know, they were they were interested in me coming to UCLA. And once I visited, I knew like I can't pass up on this. This is yeah, this no, is like a dream come true. UCLA is like such a beautiful campus and it's in such a great spot, like in LA too. It's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, obviously like the history, yeah, John the basketball Wooden, history, John Wooden, everything. Kareem, Bill Wallen, like. Do you feel mo- like that John Wooden like footprint is still in the basketball department at all? Yeah, I mean, I definitely am much more familiar with it now. Mm-hmm. But I mean, John Wooden, he's a freaking legend. He just got a stamp. Yeah, yeah. Um, Who gets a stamp? <laughs> exactly. Uh, most ever national championships. So yeah, now nah, he's a legend. Yeah. Who's the so you've played with Duran, you've played with Lively, Jaime. Like who's the best player you think you've played with? Wow, that's another tough question. <laughs> um there's a little politics in there too. <laughs> to be honest, it's tough. Like there's just so many good players. When when I was actually playing, it was probably like Derek, Derek Lively. Cause just he had a stretch where he was banging threes. Mm-hmm. Dude, he was seven three. He was J- like the number one recruit in the country. Yeah, nah, he had a, a he had a stretch time. where he was probably shooting like 40, 50 percent from three. Oh my god! And yeah. at seven three, that's just unheard of. Like he was just a freaking animal. That's nuts. Like it's kind of cool because between him and Jaime, like both of them have come into the NBA and just like hit the ground running. Like yeah. Lively's defense has like completely transformed that uh-huh. team. Yeah, he just has a crazy motor too. Like he just keeps on going, keeps on going. Yeah. So do you think we're going to see him start shooting threes in the NBA? Because I have not seen that with the Mavs yet. <laughs> I hope so. Because um, I know he could shoot it. He definitely works on it. But I mean, you know, Luca runs the show over there. So yeah. He, sure. you know, they, he's, he's not too bad of an offensive option. Yeah. So who's like the best player that you've ever <laughs> guarded? Probably Shaden Sharp. Oof. Oh yeah, dude, dude. How like how fast and athletic is he in person? Because like on the TV, he just like jumps off the screen. Uh, he's he's ridiculous. He's uh his bounce is crazy. But you know, I I'd say I held my own against him. There yeah, you know, there I, we go. Now I've seen you guard a seven footer and you held your own against him too. <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> so, so Jack was in Jesse's video that was like a giant March Madness tournament with like all these super high level players, including yourself. And like at the final game, it was like you versus like a seven footer, and the ref who was refing this just refused to call fouls. Technical, he called fouls on me. <laughs> I, got, I got a I got a technical foul in a one on one, which I've never seen happen before. So I mean, that is insane, bro. That's yeah, crazy. I think it was like the first one on one where we had like a charge. A technical foul, like nah, like I'll I'll just be in class and like get flashbacks from that. Thinking, <laughs> thinking, like, thinking about how I could be spending my ten grand. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, did you hear? Because I know UCLA is like I'm always such a high profile program. What did, did you hear about that new like NIL tournament they're just doing? I think next year. Yeah, I did. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Uh, hopefully, we're a part of the. Yeah, <laughs> damn bro, I right. hope so too, bro. I want I want you guys there because I want. To see you guys, you know, succumb to the new overlords of the Big Ten. <laughs> this guy, this guy, he never stops talking about the about Rutgers. But this season doesn't count. No, nah, Rutgers, Rutgers next season, their their class is pretty crazy. But you're from Jersey. Do you have other friends like from back home <laughs> that are chirping at you? <laughs> to be to be honest, uh, a lot of my friends do go to Big Ten schools, but not many of them go to go to Rutgers. Okay. So, well, which is any of the Big Ten schools, are they trying to talk shit? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Ohio State, Michigan. Mm. Uh, my sister goes to Wisconsin, so she's already talking crazy. Oh, damn. It's even in the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got the rivalry going already. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I don't know where where do we where do we go from here? There's like the NIL aspect of college basketball has changed so much. Like, and you guys are going getting to the end of your season around this time in a season. What's it like in a locker room? Are there like guys that you just know are gonna leave? Is it kind of like is there a lot of like air in the room of like yeah, I guess nobody also the knows. Way the transfer portals like open. Yeah, up how too. how how does the transfer portal like really affect a locker room? Um, well, I mean, this year is definitely going to be interesting. We'll definitely have a a lot of moving pieces. Um, you know, I th- I feel as if our coach may want to take a bigger emphasis on getting dudes from the transfer portal just because we were so young this year. Yeah, and you know, young teams struggle, so getting some older players. 
But, you know, nowadays guys are requesting a lot of money. It's like, <laughs> oh, well, they're paying me this and this. You know, you got to pay me this. So it's definitely going to be crazy. There will probably be like 2,000, 3,000 people in the transfer portal, which is wild. That is insane. Yeah, I feel like college basketball has like changed just like so much. It was like, I feel like it was kind of like from like a media perspective, it was like kind of dying down a little bit. And it's like Zion was crazy. And then the NBA was like, oh my God, we need to make like the G League Ignite. And then college was like, all right, now we're going to have NIL. So now everyone's going to come back to college. And it's like, I heard the NBA is like reassessing the whole like Ignite program now. Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, like actually seeing how much work goes into being a college athlete, like it was crazy. Like dudes weren't getting paid. Like it's it's damn near a full time job. I'll be uh, up in the facility most days from like, say, eight to one at least. So like there's a lot of hours that go into it. And then obviously you got school. You got to take care of your schoolwork. Yeah. How did you find time to drive all the way down here? <laughs> yeah, bro, I was so surprised. Like, I asked Jack, I was like, do you want to do like remote or in person? You're like in person. I'm like, hell yeah. But also like, damn, that's far, bro. Because I live like an hour away from UCLA. Yeah, you know, for the experience. Yeah, it yeah. came through. We really, we really appreciate it. But yeah. anyways, as you were saying about uh, NIL and the transfer portal. Yeah, no, nah, it's definitely a crazy world, but definitely necessary. Yeah, uh, yeah. Totally. Have you had anyone transfer off your team while you've been there? The two years you yeah, been there? Yeah, we had two we had two guys transfer out last year. You take that like hella personal or nah? Nah, nah, because obviously, you know, these are like brothers to me and I want, you know, everybody to get the playing time they deserve, get the money they deserve and go somewhere where they feel, you know, it's going to give them the best opportunity to play yeah. at the next level. Totally, totally. Going back to like being a full time job because we kind of touched on this in the beginning, but like next year, if you are going to be away from school for like a week, a week and a half at a time, like that's got to be like even more impossible with your classes and shit, especially with like how jet lagged you're going to be going all the way to the East Coast, like probably on like two or three trips. Yeah, no, nah, it's definitely going to be crazy. I, I honestly don't even know how it's going to work, but it will be a huge adjustment. Um, school will not be easy. It's not. It's already not easy. Yeah. So. <laughs> is is there any like? sentiment from the team that's like disappointed at all to be stepping away from like the traditional Pac-12 like rivalries and, and matchups or is it um, just kind of like I feel like it's more just like excitement yeah, yeah like yeah. everybody's really excited it's something new and also I feel as if the Big Ten atmospheres are like unmatched totally, totally. like playing at Purdue at Michigan State and at Indiana and really every everywhere. Also more traditional basketball schools. Yeah, yeah. So it's definitely going to be awesome. And I'm not saying the Pac-12, you know, has like weak or weaker environments. I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, like you go to Arizona and it's a sold out crowd and it's hype and everybody, you know, loves playing in that. And it's basically going to be like that every night, which is which is awesome. Yeah, everything you could hope for. Yeah. What has been your favorite like venue for you guys to go play at in terms of atmosphere? Has it been Zona or somewhere else? Yeah, no, nah, definitely Zona. Um, it's just so loud in there. Um, the fans are crazy. It's a pretty big rivalry, so like we don't like each other. Um, yeah, so fuck you, Ove. I'm right there with you, dude. There we go. There <laughs> we go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say Zona. Yeah, and then what? What was the atmosphere like at USC games with Bronny playing? Uh, well, USC. I mean, they always pack the house versus UCLA. Uh, you know, they usually their attendance is usually pretty weak. And then once UCLA comes in, it's like. Sold out. Show face for the one game. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. But um, <laughs> no, nah, it's always fun playing SC. The environment was great. Obviously, you know, Bronny's there, so it's a it's a big time hype game. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was fun. Yeah. All right. So before we get to drafting our UCLA big threes, we're gonna draft each of us a big three team of all UCLA players. I wanna know, like, do you have any like really funny or like just like badass Jaime stories from his time with UCLA? That's a great question. We may we may have to come back to it. I might I might have to keep that one in the back of my mind and and come back to it. I don't know if I can think of anything off the top of my head. Okay, okay, yeah, because I feel oh, like oh, actually, I got it already. Bam. Yeah. Well, it's it's not so much basketball, but uh, we went on a trip to Miami. Uh, me, Jaime, a couple other of my teammates after the season last year, and we rented a yacht. Whatever, we were having a good time. Thank and you, we nil. <laughs> <laughs> we saw Mr. Beast. Oh, when he no was filming way. his boat video? Yes, filming his boat video on a mega yacht. Did you see Tom Brady there too? We didn't see Tom Brady, but there's like dudes, um, 
couple other like YouTubers like Mac and um like Mr. Beast's like friends like pulled yeah. up on like jet skis. They were giving us like feastables. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like a crazy unexpected collab that it was just crazy. Yeah, that's I mean. such a fever dream. <laughs> we were like, is that Mr. Beast? Dude, so do I need to thank Mr. Beast for planting the idea in Jaime's head? He's like, dude, Miami's lit. <laughs> I gotta yeah, come you, here, bro. You may have Mr. Beast to thank for that. <laughs> so I guess I do have one more question before we go into our big three teams. So what like what areas do you wanna like what are you building towards? What do you what do you wanna go into after basketball or or pursuing after college? Yeah, so um I've obviously always loved sports, always wanted to be involved with sports, and you know, I really want to be a sports agent. Okay, cool. That way, cool. You know, I'll so be like involved with the Rob Palinka. <laughs> um, yeah, you're literally right down the street from like CAA, yeah, Gersh, CAA and all those Wasserman. agencies. So like that was another big you know, reason for me coming out here, just the connections, uh, being in LA, being with the UCLA basketball team who are, you know, deeply connected to Wasserman, CAA, all these, all these big time agencies. And then, you know, also just knowing people within the sport. Yeah, um, just being in LA is so yeah, exactly. an embarrassing story related to that. Let's hear so it. I forgot what the context was, but I had someone set me up with like a sports agent because I, I don't I was trying to get into like front office work myself before I did YouTube. And I was like, you know, like, what should I start to do to like kind of get into front office work? And he was like, can you name all 30 NBA presidents? And I was like, no, and he's like, <laughs> well, you don't even know the people you want to work for, bro. Like, how are you going to get into this industry? Nah, I'm that's like, crazy. I'm damn. like, damn, bro. I feel like an idiot right now. <laughs> He's I like, feel can like you name all thirty general managers. I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> I feel like no one, nobody knows that. <laughs> yeah. All thirty. Now he probably saw me coming in. He's like, this dumb fucking kid wants <laughs> to be a general manager of an NBA team. He doesn't know shit about basketball. <laughs> Damn. All those, all those my leagues. You wanted to, you wanted <laughs> yeah. to do the real thing, bro. It's two K's fault. They have all the made up president <laughs> names, bro. I gotta blame two K for me not knowing anything. Fair. That's true. If it was on 2K, I feel like that would just be like general knowledge. Yeah. Because people that like sweat on 2K, they can just like name like all the every players. player in the whole entire NBA. Yeah, they have, you know, and like assistant coaches that you're trying to hire and all yeah. that yeah. stuff. Dude, I feel like sports video games is the reason we have a generation of everyone who thinks they could be like the best president of like an NFL <laughs> because they built like a Madden team. And then it's like... <laughs> Bro, like the game, the simulation of the game is like so unrealistic compared to actual basketball. It's crazy. Speaking of NFL, you're Giants, man. Yes. Dude. Let's get into this. Okay. So are you a Giants fan? No, I am a Steelers fan. fan. Okay. Since yes, we won. talked about this. We talked Dude, about this. Dude, so I, I, I don't Thank even know God. where to begin, but like, okay, we lose Saquon Barkley, which I kind of thought was going to happen, but to the the Eagles? Yeah, yeah now nah, that's tough. That hurts. But, but to be fair, I mean, signing a running back for – a lot of money. 27 million guaranteed who has injury history. I mean, it, obviously it hurts seeing him go to, you know, your rivals. But, like, was that really? See, here's my issue is, like, I see what you're saying about the running back in a vacuum. But my real issue is I looked back to, like, the last, like, 14 years of Giants football. And, like, every time we draft a good player, we let them walk. Like, Jonathan Hankins was a good defensive tackle. Let him walk. Linval Joseph, Pro Bowl defensive tackle. Let him walk. Julian Love, Pro Bowl safety. We let him walk. Like every time we get somebody good, we just let them walk, and then we overpay for people in free agency, or we trade for good players. Over like Daniel Jones, you <laughs> think you paid him enough, dude? He's awful, bro. <laughs> Which is crazy because, like, as a Steelers fan, you can't actually talk shit about the quarterback. <laughs> Russell Why, Wilson we, is way better than Daniel Russell. Jones. Yeah, Russell Wilson feeling? is making one point two million dollars a year, so we get to surround him with all the pieces. You know, put him in a position to succeed. Still and, not picking. You know, if it, in if there. it doesn't work out, then we go from there. Hey, bro, we might have to put some money or. "Quote unquote," something on the game next year because I know we're playing each other next year. All right, we we, we could talk hey, bro, after if, the pod. If, if Giants win, you got to get me tickets to a UCLA game. I got I got you anyways. Okay, I got you anyways. There we go. But like, I want really go. good tickets. All right, all right, <laughs> I got you. I got. I you. want tickets to us versus you guys, so I can talk shit. Course Ooh, side. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we? Is it time? Are we doing this UCLA Big Three draft? We're yeah. doing it. All right, Let's Patrick, you, it. you want the first pick? Well, 
I, I don't um I can take the first pick. You got it. Uh, you are our guest though. I, I would happily give you the first pick in the in the big three draft. I mean, I wouldn't mind the first pick. I All feel right. like it's kind of <laughs> obvious where I'm gonna go with Yeah, this one. yeah. There there is kind of only one but, way um, to go. Yeah, it's gotta be Kareem. There we go. I mean, okay. there we go. Building around being building around a strong, like scoring center. It's the, it's I don't I don't really not not much explanation needed. No, no, not at all. Bit of a boomer pick though, no? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Bro, I don't know if you've seen, but apparently 90s guys couldn't dribble with their left hands. So well, like, Kareem's a yeah, 70s Yeah, I mean, we can get into how, how LeBron is better than Michael Jordan <laughs> after this, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is this first take right now? <laughs> this is the second take. All right, uh, Eric Patrick, you want to go second or third? Uh, we'll, just, we'll just go around. You can take the second pick. All right, I'm thinking... All right, you took Kareem. I feel like I got to take... I, I got to go with Bill Walton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah big, was, big red um, is right good. there. Okay, okay. Now I feel like the the top two was so simple and straightforward, and now you can go a couple of different ways. We've got Reggie Miller's on the board. Gail Goodrich, Suns legend, a UCLA legend, right there, hanging out. Um, it's not on our draft board. <laughs> hey, you're you're missing out. Gail Gail the Goodrich son's bias is crazy. Gail Goodrich was a problem. Um, but I'm going I'm going Reggie. I'll go Reggie. Exactly, bro. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was a good pick. I had him I had him. So is this like a snake? Is this No, yeah, we'll we'll just go we'll around. Straight. We'll go straight. Yeah. All right, yeah. I gotta go Westbrook. Okay. Okay. Russell Westbrook. Okay, there we go. There I we mean, go. Triple double legend. He get he gets too much hate, by the way. Dude, I mean, I'm his number one hater. Not, not, <laughs> yeah, they, not only not only is Russell Westbrook a legend on the court, but like off the court. Yeah, one, he's a great dude too. You know, he gives back to the community. Is is he involved still? Like, with yeah. UCLA so basketball? like, I'll I'll be in the facility. Um, you know, getting shots up late at night, and he'll be in there. Damn, uh, that's you awesome. Know, chop it up. So he's he's been he's a great dude. He's he's really cool. That's awesome. Do, do you see a lot of NBA players like with the runs over the summers and stuff? Yeah, no. Nah, over the summer, I mean, it's like everybody, everybody's in there. Then you know, there's some NBA teams that practice up in our facility. Um, Stephen Adams, another great dude. Clay Thompson, uh, just a couple. That, you know, I could think of off the top of my head. That's dope. All right, you guys have put me in a bind in this draft. So I've got Bill Walton. Need a guard. Hey, there's a lot a of talent I mean, on the board. Baron Davis, Drew Holiday. Yo, Gail Goodrich is so much better than Baron fucking Davis. <laughs> Baron Davis was pretty good, bro. Yeah, I feel I, like if I have Baron Davis and Bill Walton, the passing is going to be kind of crazy. Yeah, he could stretch the floor too for him. I could form my like double white guy twin towers with K Love too. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Hey, you got mm. he could stretch. Bro, you know. Pass. I saw Drew Holiday at my favorite sushi spot once, so I feel like me and Drew think alike. He'll run the system I want to run, so I'm going to roll with Drew Holiday. And he's, and he's on the Celtics. Oh, that is a – yeah, I might have to yeah. take that one back. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I need a big guy at this point. You guys are – no matter who I pick, you guys are going to dominate um, the glass. <laughs> uh, but see, I'm like – Kevin Love, awesome, great rebounder, but I'm going up against like seven two dudes. Mm -hmm. So I'm also eyeing Mark Eaton there, three time defensive player of the year, seven five, really, really monster down low. But I'll go with Kevin Love I'll, just for the name wreck. I'm trying to sell tickets as well. <laughs> um, so I got Reggie Miller and Kevin Love. I'm feeling okay. This is a tough one. Yeah, his team could shoot. I feel like that's the one thing. Our team is like, your team can't really shoot much. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah, I mean, all hey, these hey, guys my, are in their prime. My, my my team also kind of subpar with the jump shooting, too. Like, Drew's not like a crazy knockdown but, shooter. But, you know, our, our game plan is to feed Kareem. They, mm -hmm. Hey, that's, that's the way to do it. For my last pick here, I'm between... I don't know. Zach Levine's a good option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Norman Powell. Mm -hmm. There you go. Slept on Aaron Aflalo. Yeah, he was <laughs> pretty good. Go. Hey, Slept Trevor on. Ariza too? Trevor Ariza. But I feel like I got to go Norman Powell. Yeah. He could space. There you, you know. go. Then, then you got to go. Leaving, leaving a lot of Hall of Famers on the board. Norman Powell to, to go double cream. You can't do that. No. Nah. So... 
I'm going Norman Powell. Okay. All right. With my last pick, see, I could go with my heat guy. You know, heat culture. I got Walton culture, holiday culture, and heat culture. It's a lot of culture. I'm going to out-culture <laughs> you guys. Um, see, I feel like my team's got a lot of swag. Man, I don't know if this guy would be good. I don't think this guy would be good in 3v3. I feel like Lonzo is a 5v5 player, strictly. Y- yeah, 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 he is a very 5v5 player. Dude, I'm going to go with uh, I'm gonna go, uh, Baron Davis or Zach Levine. That's tough. Hey, I'm not I'm not helping you out. <laughs> well, bro, you're going to pick Gail Goodrich. I'm not worried. Dude. Uh, <laughs> uh, just tell if me. I'm you, I'm going I'm going to be dead. Just Yeah, just, you know, I'm going to go with Baron. Yeah, I'm going to go with Baron Davis. Okay. I feel like my team's got a lot of swag. Okay. I'm I'm looking at Gail Goodrich, of course. <laughs> it's your guy. Absolute problem. Multiple time all NBA player, champion with the Lakers. Uh-huh. Great player. And then I'm also looking at Jamal Wilkes. Silk won championships with the with the Warriors, with the Lakers. But then I could also just go gigantic with uh, Mark Eaton. Marcus Johnson's still there. You, you definitely need the inside presence. I, just, I just my opinion. Yeah. You're going up against Kareem. You're going up against Bill Walton. I hear that. I'm a little bit worried. I'm. Here's the thing, though. Like, am I gonna have freaking Kevin Love guard, <laughs> guarding in space, or do I just like take the L down low? I know K Love's gonna fight for rebounds. I think either way, you're Bro, go I full think offense. All three of our teams in a three v three environment are putting up so many buckets. That's true. It's it, so much easier to score in threes than fives. Um. That's yeah. True. Yeah. You know what? I gotta. I gotta stick with my brand. I gotta go with Gail Goodrich, my oh guy. My Suns God. legend. Suns Let's crazy. go. <laughs> Suns legend. Lakers legend. True. True. He's on the Lakers too. So, yeah. So that's also a, a point against him in your book too, huh? As a Celtics fan. Yeah. But now that you're in LA, I feel like it's like impossible to not root for the Lakers when you live in LA. Oh, let me tell you, it's very possible. <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm not. As a Celtics fan, I'm not going to sit here and say I root for the Lakers. But I am a LeBron fan. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So, I'm with you, on that. you know, I'd like to see LeBron, you know, succeed, get another ring. Hopefully he leaves the Lakers. So maybe I could see that. Yeah. Does he ever come by UCLA for those runs or never? Nah. I mean, I heard that like he, he went like back back when he was a little bit younger, but yeah, I, guess, I haven't seen him. I guess I've seen Steph that- Curry. I've seen Damn. Trey Young. I've seen... A lot of dudes, but nah, never. Yeah, LeBron. I feel like LeBron probably can't play that much extra basketball at this point in his in his life. I don't know how he still does it. Yeah, it's crazy. Who's like the one like player you wish you like you'd wish would come by so you could hoop with them? I mean LeBron. LeBron, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, really any of the Celtics guys. Yeah. Have you met up any of like Tatum or Brown or any of those guys? Probably Drew, right? Yeah, I've met Drew. Uh but yeah, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's just quickly go over who we ended up picking, and then um, I guess the the fans will will be able to decide the winner in the comments. Yeah. Okay, so my team was Bill Walton, Drew Holiday, and Baron Davis. I had Kareem, Russell Westbrook, and Norman Powell. And I had uh, Reggie Miller, Gail Goodrich, and Kevin Love. Okay, that's a pretty solid, solid team. That's a solid yeah. squad. Hey, UCLA, just cr- cranking UCLA it. UCLA is crazy. Out town. Yeah, bro, you guys' all-time team is just, like, insane. I feel like it's, like, you guys, Duke and Kentucky are just – and UNC. It's, like, the four just absolutely insane schools. But the thing the, – the difference between, like, UCLA and, like, Duke is, like, I feel like UCLA's great players are also great in the NBA. And, like, Duke, like – Shane Battier is like their great player. Christian Leitner, like these guys. Oh, like, in terms of like winning in college and winning in yeah, the they, yeah, they're just not on the same level once they get to the NBA a lot of the times. But is it is it hot streak shooting slump? No, it's best take, worst take. Or, or it is best take, worst take. It is only Monday. Yeah. Um. Hell yeah. All right. So do we do a segment called best take, worst take, where we do bring the two best NBA takes of the week, the two worst NBA takes of the week. Since you're a guest, you're going to choose which was the best and which was the worst. All right. Sounds you, good. You want to go first, Patrick? You want to yeah. go second? Um, I'll go second. Okay. I feel like we might have the same worst take of the week again, but uh, we'll see. We don't talk about this, these things beforehand. All right. My I best see. take is going to D'Angelo Russell. Uh, he said, quote, public humiliation has done nothing but mold me into the killer you all see today. Bro, and D'Lo has been hooping for like two straight months. He's been cooking. 
It's been playing really well, so that's my best take. Yeah, my best take is just going to the Clippers organization as a whole. They announced today that they are relocating and rebranding their G League team from the Agua Caliente Clippers to the San Diego Clippers once again, which is kind of like a a throwback from when they moved from Buffalo (laughs) to San Diego. I think it's a cool homage to their history, as well as just like bringing professional basketball to San Diego, which is really awesome. Um, and we throw it to you, Jack. Um, I'm going to have to go with the Clippers one as the best take. <laughs> there we go. Um, I definitely think it is in the best interest of the Clippers to get out of Staples. Yeah, it's good. And kinda... get away from, you know, the Lakers. And, and kind of mold. Shadow. Yeah, exactly. And the new stadium looks freaking insane, too. Yeah, so crazy. Uh, like the wall. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen, but. That all just looks super cool. So, yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Hell yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's weird, though, that the Clippers, like, we've talked about this a couple times. They're moving to, like, where the Lakers practice. <laughs> that is kind of weird. That it, That is definitely a little weird. But, I, I mean, mean they, they're in the same city. It's like, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, you know, there's only so many places to yeah. go. Yeah, that's true. Although, LA is just huge, bro. Yeah. It's like, I feel like the, the geographic size of LA. I think LA County, by, like, square footage, is bigger than Rhode Island. The state. That does that's not crazy. surprise me. Yeah, that's nuts. All right, my worst take. You think we have the same one? I think we might. I have Skip Bayless. I also have Skip oh, Bayless. God. Okay. okay. <laughs> I have so Skip right. Bayless said, quote, Anthony Edwards' game-winning block was overrated. We have different takes <laughs> from Skip Bayless. <laughs> the easiest block you'll ever see. So I don't know if you saw this. Anthony Edwards yeah, had like I saw that it. insane. He almost hit his head on the rim. I, that seems like one of the most difficult game saving blocks I've ever seen, bro. Like, dude almost injures himself hitting his head on the rim and also almost clips his body over two people. If, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he he covered a lot of ground too. Yeah. It was like LeBron esque. Well, not only is that just like one of the more impressed, like, you can take away the time and situation of the game. Like, it won them the game. But, like, when have you ever seen anyone jump like that for a block? Bro, it's yeah. been a minute. Um, well, my Skip Bayless take that <laughs> I love how this man is. both of our worst he's on takes. a he's on a heater right now. Um, Skip Bayless was once again um, reiterated his top ten list um, this this last week, and he oh, said, "This is what I think it is." Though. I still have LeBron James ninth, ninth? on my all time. Yeah, man, I'm list. sorry, but um, ninth. That, that is one of the worst takes that I have ever heard. From anybody, and yeah, that that means the worst take. Who did he have ahead of him? Um, okay, let me let me pull this filibuster with talking about how bad of a take it was while I pull up the list of. And I thought I thought the first take was pretty bad. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I was pretty confident I was gonna come in here with the worst take, especially you know usually a skip take is like good like fodder to be worst of the week. Although he's only one. Has he even won a worst of the month yet? Just once. I think. That's this is the worst take of all time. No, bro. Do you want? Yeah, we have some bad ones on this show. Ninth. I know. Uh, Actually, it, I have a question to throw back to an old take because I'm curious. Because I would say, you know, you played Division One basketball. Would you classify yourself as a real hooper? <laughs> yes. All right. So uh, we've noticed a trend where almost all bad takes start with this phrase: "Real hoopers know." So I guess we have to verify. Do real hoopers know that Kyrie Irving is actually better than Luka Doncic? Is better than Luka Doncic. <laughs> I don't know if I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah, that was Kenyon Martin. <laughs> okay, here we go. I've got Skip Bayless's top 10 list. Probably plays better defense. <laughs> Number one, he's got Michael Jordan, of course, which okay. is a fine right, take. Fair, fair. Um, t- two, he's got Magic. Then three, Shaq. Then four, Kareem. Then five, Tim Duncan. Then six, Bill Russell, and seven, Kobe Bryant, eight, Larry Bird, and nine, LeBron James. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, that's not it. I will say, I do agree with, and I don't know if you guys will agree with this, I do agree with the Shaq. Being really high up there? Yes. Yeah, no, I am a big I'm, Shaq, I'm on Shaq Yeah, I don't have qualms sure. with Shaq being really high up, but LeBron not being top two blows my mind. Yeah, LeBron not being top one blows my mind. Yeah, I mean, I personally have him number one, but I can see the argument for Jordan. But, like, I just don't even understand. Like, not even top two is crazy. Yeah, I mean, of these guys, like, I have LeBron two and I have MJ one. but And I love Shaq. Shaq's a top ten guy for me. 
but I, there's literally no like statistical or just like accomplishment arguments that you can make for LeBron being above Shaq and LeBron being above really any of these guys except for yeah nah he's Michael. tripping yeah, yeah it's crazy so do you guys debate LeBron Jordan stuff in the locker room or since you're all kind of younger is everyone just team LeBron no I mean it's definitely debated a little bit there's more team LeBron but like I personally don't think it's close oh you don't even think it's close no nah, I don't what is like the big separator for you um well more so just like the level of competition yeah okay, okay. like LeBron has faced multiple teams with four plus Hall of Famers. Like the Spurs with Kawhi, Tony Parker, Ginobili, Ginobili. Tim, Tim Duncan. Duncan. Yeah. Greg Popovich. You want to count him? The That's War- true. They got five. <laughs> the Warriors. I mean. Hey, T-Mac seven- was on one of those Spurs teams too. With this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're so right. Like, yeah, no, you cook, are right. Yeah. I mean, how do you beat Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and like Draymond Green who was like, you know, Best best defensive player of the last that, 25 and, and years. He, and he yeah. can shoot, too. Mm-hmm. That's what I've always hated. I always see that one graphic. It's like the best team during MJ's era was MJ's team. I'm like, okay, but hypothetically, what if Scotty got drafted to like the Celtics and all of a sudden it's like Bird, you know, Scotty or exactly. it's like... Well- I mean, or yeah, like that's well, what I hate is like it's not like Michael Jordan had any control over Scottie Pippen like getting drafted by the Bulls and becoming it, it'd be like if the Cavs drafted Kawhi Leonard in two thousand nine like that just didn't happen for LeBron. Yeah, and, and to your point, like Michael did face one team consistently with that many Hall of Famers in the Bad Boy Pistons, and he lost over and over and over to them until he was finally able to break through. But like he doesn't. Michael never gets the credit for that, those losses, the way that LeBron yeah, d- I mean, seems to. And also, you know, Michael Jordan, he left the Bulls to go play baseball, and they still, like, if I'm not mistaken, made the Eastern Conference Finals. Games, yeah, game they seven, were still a really good team. Game seven, like the year after, and then, I mean, everybody, LeBron took the Cavs to the finals and then they had the worst leaves record, the next yeah. year, and they give the first pick in the draft. Yeah. So. No, it, it is it is crazy, like, just the difference in, like, teammate quality the two of them have had. Like, it is just absolutely insane. For me, the reason I still think it's a debate is I still – because I think if you did pick Jordan in today's NBA, he would just be, like, kind of hard to stop in space with, like, how, like, dynamic of an athlete he was in that yeah. mid-range shot. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, if you – if you he I, he's definitely not the same, like, creator that, like, a LeBron is or even, like, a Luka is in terms of just, like, creating for other people on the team. Yeah, I definitely think it'd be interesting. And, you know, like, I just feel like today's game, like, is just so much, so much more skilled. Yeah. I mean, you got guys like Steph Curry shooting from 40 feet out, like, totally. like, like nothing. My thing about, like, any inter, like, era debate is it's just, like, you can go around and around. And, but at the end of the day, all we really have to, like, assess is them versus the competition that they mm-hmm. played against. Exactly. And, you know, we we did see like we saw Mag or Michael Guard Magic in the finals when Magic was pretty much like just barely post prime. Like that was really, really impressive. But also like Scotty doesn't get the love for how great he was too. Yeah. Yeah, it's all, it's also crazy too because the rules were so different. Because when Jordan played, they had to either play like a hard double team, or because otherwise they weren't allowed to play like zone defense. Back yeah, then. it was like illegal defense. defense. And nowadays you see teams like the Heat play like zone all the time, and it's like yeah, like you see a lot in college basketball. There's so much more zone yeah, usage in like three seconds. Yeah, like when the big man is like camping down there, bro. It's like so much harder for to get offense going than like yeah. nowadays. It's like now there's always that soft double team like you always have to deal with that if you're a lebron or a jordan type mm-hmm. player what do you I think hear. about the you said no three seconds that there's been some like talk about like maybe if the nba took away th- the three second rule it might fix like the surge of offense what do you what do you think about that idea um for the nba i mean to be honest i really don't think that it would help that much mm-hmm. if because like if if you got to do just in, like everybody could really shoot now mm-hmm. and like even if you know your big man can't shoot if you put him in the pick and roll like then how do you yeah you, they, you, you have know, to you draw you drop too much and you just in the paint the dude's gonna get a wide open shot so like even like for a dude that's just in the paint it's it's pretty difficult yeah that's true it's tough I, I have one question have you seen that dude I forgot what school he plays for he plays like Jokic have you seen that dude oh that Indiana, gigantic State. Guy? Oh, Indiana, Indiana State. State yeah 
Did you guys play them? Is that, no, we haven't 10, played right? them. They actually lost. They were they were like looking like they were definitely going to be in March Madness, and they lost in the finals of their conference. And now, you know, who knows? It's tough to get into March Madness. Like yeah, a, a non Power Five school. Because you guys were fifth in the the pack this year, right? Yeah, I, I thought because I don't watch a lot of college, but like fifth in the pack isn't like enough to make the tournament nowadays. No, I mean we finished like fifteen and sixteen, I think. That's more of a statement of like the conference. Yeah, no, the conference yeah. was really weak this year. Um, yeah, it was a down year. Um, but we play this week in the Pac-12 tournament, so you know. There we go. Let's go. We guys got this first shot in the world. We got Oregon State. Oh, let's go. So you know, we we play in the 12 seed, and you know our team is really. Confidence goes a long way for us. You know, we're young. So if we could maybe get one, two wins, you know, maybe we could, you know, yeah. shock, shock the it world. It all just starts yeah. snowballing. It's like a Kemba exactly. Walker. <laughs> but it's pretty crazy to think about, you know, you had a down year. Um, but and if you fifth. win four you're games fifth, in a yeah. row, like you could. You're there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Who's who's first in the pack this year? Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, they're, okay. They're mm-hmm. like a consensus top five. Yeah. I team. feel like Zona is like always good at basketball. They are. Yeah, they, they are. are. Bro, I've, I've, I'm like the most college basketball casual. Like, I'm always like following <laughs> like too. the draft. And then this year, it's like, I feel like every time I pull up the draft thing, it's like all like the top guys are like SAR or like Topic. It's like these international yeah. dudes this year. You'll you'll definitely be more more involved in college basketball year. You know, oh, yeah. Next no, year, I'm like, your, Rucker, your Rucker's <laughs> squad's going to be. I've like been talking all this shit. And then you keep being like, yeah, you know, it's kind of hard to win when you're young. And I'm like, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that to me. Yeah. No, nah, well, I mean, I've, I've, you know, like Dylan Harper. He's from Jersey, so you know, I've seen him play a lot. Like I've worked out with him a couple times. He's, he's legit. Yeah. But then I know, um, uh, what's the Bailey? Ace Bailey. Yeah, yeah. Ace Bailey. I haven't seen him play, but I know, you know, he's top five dude. So he'll, he'll be legit. Yeah. When does the schedules come out for college? Usually, not till summer. Dang, we gotta wait. Yeah. <laughs> I know. How am I going to get you to watch the NBA next year? I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the, lot, the one year I really watched a ton of hoops. Actually, I watched you guys the last two years in March Madness because, like, you guys had some crazy runs. Actually, and the year before that with Drew Zhang, too. Yeah. It was crazy, too. I mean, last year, and, you know, I'm going to sound salty saying this, but, you know, if we're healthy, I really think we would have. We would have won the whole thing. I mean, that was kind of the sentiment. Like, you, you guys got injured at the wrong time. Yeah, you know, Jalen Clark. Uh, defensive player of the year in the country. Um, like, towards Achilles, last game of the regular season. Um, then a Dambona, uh, like, fractured his shoulder or, you know, mm-hmm. hurt his shoulder in the Pac-12 tournament. And that one definitely hurt. You know, he's our defensive anchor. The game he ended up losing, Drew Timmy for Gonzaga. had, like, 38 points. And we still, yeah, we still right almost there. won. So. Is Timmy a shit talker? Eh... I mean, a little bit, but you know, he looks. Like I, he, I would, I would be shit talking if I had forty <laughs> points in the, the Sweet Sixteen. <laughs> yeah, I, I love like I loved watching Timmy every year because I swear he just looked like absolutely unstoppable. But he also looked like like a like, frat bro. You'd see like drinking on like frat bro, and that's like Jokic. Like you look at him and you're like, I mean, obviously he's seven foot, but like you look at him and he's like bigger and like he's slow and he you know moves around and then he gives you thirty. Yeah. yeah, just Luca too. You yeah, know, exactly. pros. Yeah, I don't know why I'm like obsessed watching players like that because I think it's so funny. Like, I feel like they just make everyone so mad who's like playing against them. Yeah, like if I was a Lakers fan and I saw Nikola Jokic in those one-legged <laughs> bank shot three pointers last year in the play, I would have been losing my mind. Hey, I, I mean, I was losing my mind when the Celtics were playing, but yeah, yeah, yeah he took out all of our favorite teams. Yeah, yeah. Or I guess not the Celtics, but... All right, yeah, I guess before we go, like, I know at the beginning I asked you about the fear level for Rutgers. What's your fear level for the heat? You know, like, Jimmy's starting (laughs) to heat up. Looks like the way the bracket's shaking. He's trying to bait you, you, guys, man. man. Like, this is our year. This is the Celtics year, and I say this almost every year. But (laughs) this year is different. We got Drew Holiday. We got Chris Stops. We finally, you know, have have a... Legit big. Legit big. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, Al Horford, he turns it up come playoff time. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm, yeah, not really, I'm not really worried. What's the key? Honest. What's, what's the key to the Celtics winning the championship this year? Is it just staying healthy? The key, well, obviously, you know, staying yeah. healthy, but the key is get into the basket. I yeah. feel like the one thing mm-hmm. with the Celtics is 
whether they're making or missing, they just keep shooting threes and keep shooting threes. Yeah, that's my one thing about Tatum that I I always wanted to take that next step because I feel like the year you guys went to the finals versus the Warriors is like when he goes to the basket, I feel like he tries to play like a finesse driving style, and I'm like, dude, you are like jacked. Like I feel like he doesn't drive to the basket enough. Like yeah. he's too busy. Like like takes too many step back threes, contested threes. Like end of the game, we'll shoot like a contest, like a step back, like get to the basket. Like he's he's pretty unstoppable getting to the rim. It's funny because I feel like if you just gave him like Jalen Brown's mentality, <laughs> like you gave him like Jalen Brown's brain, I feel like he'd become a like way better player. Nah, well, I mean, you know, once they win it all this year, he gets a ring under his belt. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll be, everything we'll changes. Be a different player. Okay, yeah. so we we just we're rolling we're on this Celtics thing. I want to ask you one more thing. So, Bucks, Cavs, Knicks, Sixers, Heat. Can you? I, who are you most worried about? Who are you least worried about? I'm least worried about the Sixers. You guys okay. the Sixers. One, because no Joel Embiid, and even when Joel Embiid plays, we still own them. So Sixers are at five. Um, that hurts my The soul. Knicks. You, you got Cavs in there, too. I, I put in the Cavs, too. The Knicks, I feel like, are a regular season team. Okay. I, feel like they, I feel like they play hard. They play harder than everybody in the regular season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like dudes Tibbs, will take classic Tibbs off. shit. They'll, they play dudes 40-plus minutes. I'm I'm not too worried about the Knicks. Okay, so Knicks, Knicks the Cavs, are the Cavs are a little slept on. Uh, I mean, I know Donovan Mitchell's out. Mm-hmm. I don't know like the severity. They, they've had so he'll be back, but I feel like you guys would dominate the Cavs. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think so in the playoffs because I feel like the, in the regular season they like to uh, they haven't lately, but they play like Mobley and Allen together, and it's like yeah. I feel like in the playoffs you guys are going to be like, all right, everyone's spaced out, like. Have fun. I mean, the, Donovan Mitchell is just he's he a dog. Had, yeah, he, he's a, he's a dog. He he won't go down without a fight. But I'm not worried about the Cavs. And okay, then, so three. We, we got the Bucks. Bucks and Heat. Those are the last two. Those are definitely the two I'd say I'm most worried about. Um, I mean, the Heat is just like they like lull you to sleep during the regular season. It's like oh, like we're not really worried about them this year. Then Jimmy Butler turns into God. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like think, Jimmy- and I mean Caleb Martin. I've never seen him miss in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you think Jimmy Butler is secretly Jordan's son, or you're not buying that one? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, over under like six guys in the NBA that are actually Jordan's <laughs> son. No. Yeah, but like the Bucks. I mean, obviously you got Giannis, you got Dame, but like I, I, I'm not really worried about anybody. I, this is our year, and I'm confident. I'm so wait, wait, wait. wait. Am that. I getting this right? You're you would be more. You're not worried about we're, anybody. We're fine in the East, but you'd be. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be more worried about the Heat than the Bucks. I don't know. It's like it's fifty fifty. Yeah, fifty fifty. Yeah. Just uh, g- in general, I'm most worried, worried about the Nuggets. Fine oh, in the East. Was, there I'm we most go. Most worried about the Nuggets. Most Bro, worried like, about the, the Nuggets. The thing about the Nuggets that pissed me off was like last season when we made the finals. I literally was like, you know, we just beat the Bucks, we beat the Knicks, we beat the Celtics, and I was like. We literally have no shot. <laughs> like, bro, I did this like promo thing for the NBA where I was like interviewing like influencers who were, who were Heat fans and influencers mm-hmm. who were Nuggets fans. And I was like, made it clear as a Heat fan at the end, the NBA guy's like, all right, everyone give your picks. And I'm like hosting it. And I was like, I think Nuggets are going to win in five. And the other Heat fans were like, you fucking traitor. <laughs> I, like, we I mean, no shot. it definitely did not help the Heat that that Celtics series went to seven. Yeah, no. Like, if they could have just closed that out, that would have – they would have been on extra rest. Um, and speaking of, like, injuries, we got lucky because Tatum got hurt right when the game started. Yeah, I mean, we would have been NBA champions if that didn't happen, but that's a, that's a whole other story. <laughs> Bro, you were convinced. You, you, you sound like – you're like a Cowboys fan, but for basketball. I mean – Pretty much. I just love it. It's not even you're a Cowboys. You're a true fan. Yeah. yeah. The which Celtics, I, I the love. Ce- and I was at the the final. I was at the finals uh-huh. when the Celtics played the Warriors. I was at Game Three, which we won. There we go. And I was at Game Six when we lost to Miami, and Jimmy Butler had damn near fifty points. And I thought I was about to see my team celebrating. Going to the finals, and I see Jimmy Butler absolutely kill. Is that the best like single performance you've ever seen on a basketball court? In, in yeah, person, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah. It's kind of weird, like how much better Jimmy gets in the playoffs. They were saying like he's gonna have to like turn into prime LeBron, like Miami Heat LeBron, for them to win this game, and he literally did just yeah. that. 
<laughs> hey, we'll see what happens this season. Thank you for coming on the pod, Jack. Do you want to promote anything like Instagram? Uh, yeah, I mean, Instagram, Jack Seidler, uh, TikTok, Jay Side. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, dude, thank you so awesome. much. This Any is fun. Time. Yeah. The all chair right. is always open. Yeah. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.